Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is October 19th, 2020, and this is part 32 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. This video is called Hope in the Day of Wrath. The um, last few videos that I've done have been very sobering, I think. Um, the Day of Wrath is not a pleasant time for the earth. And the Lord asks in many places in Scripture, Why do you want the Day of the Lord? Don't you know that the Day of the Lord is darkness and not light? Doesn't it feel to you that we live now in a time of darkness? Yes, we do. Because we are entering the Day of the Lord, the Day of Wrath. You need to be sober in this time. You need to be thoughtful, circumspect, understanding the times in which you live. But there is a distinction between God's people who are faithful and who obey him and who walk with him and the people who are going to have wrath poured out upon them. Scripture makes it clear that God's people are not appointed to wrath. The wrath of God does not come in order to punish his people. His, punished, his people have been punished by Babylon, the great, for over 2,500 years for seven times in Scripture, seven complete times. Christians and those that are faithful to God have always been persecuted. Those who have been in control, both in the church and in governments, have always persecuted killed and destroyed the faithful overcomers of God, the Kodeshim. In the Bible, that word is usually translated saints, and that word has lost its meaning because of the gross hypocrisy of so many churches. But wrath is not appointed by God for the Kodeshim for the faithful, for the overcomers, for those who are walking with God. Today what I want to do is share some scriptures that I hope will give you a lot of peace and a lot of hope with respect to this dark time that we live in and the days that are shortly coming before our very eyes. You can already sense the chaos that is about to unfold. Everybody knows that the Democrats are going to cheat, have planned to cheat. They have cheated for years and years to have the power that they have. You know that when Donald Trump wins the election fairly, that the Democrats are going to contest it and they're going to then begin their riots and their craziness their fires, their, and continue their coup against Donald Trump. You know that. You know that's going to happen. So you need to be prepared for that. You need to have supplies. You need to have extra food. You need to have a supply of Kleenex and toilet paper. You need to have clean water. You need to have a source for heat, especially as we're coming into winter now. There is going to be incredible fear coming upon the earth. But you do not need to be in fear. And you should not have been in fear over this whole past year as COVID-19 was spread abroad throughout the world 
and where all the powers that be did everything they could to terrorize people into obeying their every whim, including wearing masks everywhere. I passed people on hikes in the wilderness last week and the week before wearing masks. Insanity. Insanity. They've closed down churches. They've closed down restaurants. They've done everything they could to hurt the economy, to hurt Donald Trump, to hurt President Trump, because they thought that this might make it impossible for him to win re-election. But Donald Trump prevailed. He's going to win re-election. If you had taken the word of God to heart over the last months, you would not have been in fear. And I'm going to show you that now from Psalm 91. Recently, I saw that 10 Psalms together from 91 up to Psalm 100 speak of the time that we're living in right now. They speak of the time when God comes and takes authority over the earth. It's amazing, really, the pro prophetic aspect of so many Psalms. And this particular area is one of those. Psalm 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Do you say that? Do you dwell in his shelter? For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will deliver you from the one who is hunting for your life, and he will deliver you from the deadly pestilence. Well, that's what we've had the last year, isn't it? A deadly pestilence. And many people have been afraid. But we needed to be in faith that our God would protect us. Verse 4, For he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Another word for faithfulness is truth. His truth is is a shield and buckler. When we walk in truth, we have a mighty shield against the assault of the enemy, against the lies of the enemy. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. See, once again, God tells us that we will not fear the pestilence that stalks in darkness. COVID is a pestilence. COVID is a plague. We will not fear the arrow that flies by day. We won't fear those wicked fists that try to hit us when we're walking down the streets. We won't fear the bullets of the enemy when they see us in our MAGA hat. Walk, walk in integrity, walk in truth, and walk fearlessly. Look at verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. That is an astounding verse, an astounding scripture. And I have seen its truth in my life. 20 years ago, God moved my family and me to a wilderness area of the United States. We have not had to fear any of this chaos that we've seen over the last, this whole year. We have been very safe, 
felt very secure. And we only look with our eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. See, God is judging the wicked now. And it's time for them to be judged. Okay? And you who continue with your mindset of do not judge lest you be judged need to understand that the spiritual man judges all things. So you need to have been judging all along. You need to have been judging whether this particular thing was right or wrong. And I could go into detail about so many things, but you know what's right and you know what's wrong. But you didn't judge that. Most of you didn't judge that. You were afraid to judge that because the world told you, do not judge lest you be judged. Well, I'm sorry. I will judge you for your abortions, world. I will judge you for your sex trafficking. I will judge you for your pornography. I will judge you for your wicked movies that you make. Oh yes, I will judge. And the time has come when we need to understand that there are people who are locked into a mindset that cannot repent. They have committed the unforgivable sin. Don't pray for them, John says. Don't pray for them. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your effort. Why are you doing that? You've preached to them. You've talked to them all your lives. They never repent, and now they can't repent. They call evil good, and they call good evil. They are the ones who always vote for abortion. They are the ones who vote for their open borders who, and vote for the politicians who make that the policy of this country. Many of them were the people who voted for Obama, but a lot of them have repented. But the time of repentance may be over. It's few there are who will repent these days because people are locked into their mindset. They're locked in. Remember Revelation chapter 18. That's the chapter that talks about the destruction of Babylon the Great. That's happening, and that's been happening for the last four years since Donald Trump took office. But we haven't seen we haven't seen physically the great destruction yet. We're going to see that. Revelation 18 says to come out of her, to come out of Babylon. Come out of her systems, come out of her places of work. Because if you don't, you are going to partake of her plagues because you have partaken of her sins. There are many people, many people who say that they are Christians who work doing abominable deeds because they're afraid of losing their money, of losing their pensions of losing their retirement, of losing their job. They've taken the mark of the beast, you see. They've already taken the mark of the beast. Don't think that that's something in the future. You've either taken it or not at this time in your life. Can you repent? Up until a point, you can repent. But now what's happened is that a deception came upon the whole earth. And it came because people refused to love the truth. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. They refused to love the truth. The man of lawlessness has been revealed, people. Therefore, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ can come again, that he can establish his kingdom now. The signs have occurred. We are there. The lawless one has been revealed. The great divorcement, the great apostasy, it's not an apostasy from 
faith and scriptures. It's a division. It's a divorcement. Donald Trump divorced the deep state. Donald Trump Donald Trump and his team and everyone affiliated with him left Babylon the Great. That was a division of Satan's kingdom because a lot of these people have not come into God's kingdom yet. But they're on their way. They have repented of some major things. People have walked away from the demonic sickness of the left. So back to verses 7 and 8. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. We are going to see, I believe, a lot of people destroyed. Already we have seen people die. Especially in the riots up in the uh, northwest of this country. But in other places, Denver a week ago, um, up in Wisconsin, Michigan, Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. Do you know his name? Do you know God's name? There is only one name under heaven by which men may be saved. Do you know that name? Is it Buddha? Is it Muhammad? Is it Krishna? Do you ever hear anybody rebuke a demon in the name of Muhammad? Rebuke a demon in the name of Krishna? Rebuke a demon in the name of Buddha? Of course not. There is one name under heaven by which men may be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus the Messiah. Yeshua the Messiah. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him, says Jesus. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and I will honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Wonderful, wonderful hope this scripture gives us in this time of tribulation, this time of wrath, in this time of the day of the Lord. Psalm 91. But it doesn't end there. Psalm 92 then begins, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. Well, I don't take that lightly. You know, I often will pick up my guitar and I will just begin to play, you know. Whatever the Lord gives me, there will be times when I'll just pray, Father, I would love a new song today and he gives me a song that day how great are your works O lord your thoughts are very deep the stupid man cannot know the fool cannot understand this 
that though the wicked sprout like grass, that all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. See, we've lived in the days of Babylon the Great for over 2,500 years in which evildoers flourished Evildoers always rose to the top, and the righteous were always discriminated against. The righteous could never be the president of the college. The righteous could never be the CEO of the hospital. Whatever it is, think about it. The evil flourish. It's the evil ones who are the millionaires and the billionaires and the trillionaires. They're the ones who took the mark of the beast to buy and sell. But those who refused to take the mark of the beast have not been able to buy and sell. They've been content with what God gave them. And it's been enough. More than enough. It's been a blessing. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. That's where we are. Our eyes are going to see, finally, the downfall of our enemies, the downfall of the evil men and women who have ruled this world. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. You know, I really take that to heart now. This week, I turned 65 years old, and I expect to continue to bear fruit, even though I've now entered the time of old age. I continue to be full of sap and green. I will continue to create things. I will continue to write, to speak, to write poems, to write songs, to play music to even try to learn to play piano. So don't, don't think that you're too old to still do something useful. Because if you follow the Lord, you will bear fruit in old age. You will be full of sap. You will be green. You will be able to move and do things. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So we have the promise of God's protection in Psalm uh, 91. Then in 92, we're thankful that God is going to be with us in this time. What time is that? Psalm 93 tells us, the Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Okay, the floods, the sea, the sea is roaring now. That's mankind. The sea is roaring. They've lifted up. But mightier, mightier than that, mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the thunders of the sea of mankind, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high, he is mighty. Your decrees are trustworthy, very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And then Psalm 94. What is the day of wrath? It is the day of vengeance. It is the day of God's vengeance. Oh Lord, God of vengeance. 
O God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Repay to the proud what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? They exulted forever. They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. Have you heard them boast? Have you heard the evildoers, the wicked ones boast? Look what they said and how they boasted when they were impeaching President Trump in a lawless way. Lying. Our elected representatives lying to our faces about what they said the evidence was. How long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. What is abortion but the murder of the fatherless? What is killing the widow but the stealing of of income and money from the elderly? And they say, the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. They believe there's no accountability Then God says, understand, O dullest of the people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, me, God, he who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord, he knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. And now back to the writer of this psalm. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Are you instructed out of God's law? Do you understand that God's law teaches us how to live? Do you know all of the Ten Commandments? Can you name them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You should be able to. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, to give him rest from the days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. We are coming into the day of trouble, but we will have rest. We will have rest. And you can only rest by faith. Faith in the one who has given us his promises. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. We have lived under injustice forever. Here is the promise though. Justice will return to the righteous. Do you long for God's justice? Do you long for his righteousness to come? So important, as we'll see in just another psalm or two. Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against evildoers? Do you? Do you stand up against wickedness and against evil? Do you speak the truth? Or are you afraid to speak the truth? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. Steadfast love, another word for that is mercy. Your mercy, O Lord, held me up. Your grace held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Can wicked rulers be allied with you? Those who frame injustice by statute? So amazing, the wording. Amazingly poetic, filled with truth. Can wicked rulers be allied with you or allied with you? Those who frame injustice by statute. Do you realize, you understand that our lawmakers make laws that are lawless? The law is the frame. 
and it frames injustice. That's why we are so oppressed. We're oppressed under laws of taxation. Practically everybody in this country could be charged with some felony that they don't even know exists. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who frame injustice by statute? They, the wicked rulers, band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. What is abortion? But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. He will bring back on them their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. This is coming. Don't pray for them, they cannot repent. They call good evil and evil good. The time of their destruction, the time of their judgment is at hand. And then once again now, back to praising God. See, we, should be at rest, thankful, writing songs, making melody in our hearts. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day of Mass at Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had not though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. This, of course, is talking about the people that Moses led out of Egypt. But you know where else this scripture appears? It's in the book of Hebrews. It's in the book of Hebrews at the beginning of the book where the writer is telling us that we need to enter into God's rest. And that's what we need to do now. Have you known God's ways? Verse 10. That's why God gave us the history, the testimony, his laws in all of the Old Testament books so that we would know his ways. When you know his ways, you're getting to know God. You're beginning to understand what God requires of you how he wants us to live, that he doesn't want us to go out and do works of our own flesh. We can all decide we want to be welfare workers and go out and find a million people that need help. But is that what God wants you to do? If it is, then do it, of course. We are to be led of the the Holy Spirit to do whatever works God has prepared in advance for us to do. That's how we enter his rest. Once we enter his rest, it's you no longer have to think about, oh man, what do I need to do to earn brownie points with God? See, it's not about earning brownie points with God. Do you realize that there is only one religion in which you do not have to work for your salvation. 
Only one. Every other religion requires that you do certain things, certain things to become an ascended master in Buddhism or Hinduism. Certain things that you have to do to satisfy Allah, praying three times a day, fasts at Ramadan. You must do this in order to be accepted. I don't live under a list of do's and don'ts to be accepted by my God. I live by faith. But I don't live a lawless life because I understand God's ways. See? I understand His ways. And therefore, I walk in His ways. And therefore, I will not come under His wrath. Then 96 again. Back to praise. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. What is the offering? Thanksgiving. You, you make an offering of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings upon me, upon my family, my wife, my children, for the good food you give me to eat, the home that you've blessed me to have. Thank you, Lord. Say among the nations, Verse 9, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The splendor of holiness. Most people don't even want to mention the word holy anymore. Say among the nations, the Lord reign, reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity, justice, mercy, truth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Wow. Are you rejoicing? Are you exulting that God is now coming to judge the world? I am. I am rejoicing. I am thankful. God, thank you that you are coming. Thank you that you are coming to judge the world. The world needs to be judged. <coughs> the world needs to be judged. The world needs to be restored to righteousness. The trees of the forest, that's us. That's us. Sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes. Do you understand? The Lord is coming. Now, for some people, it's too late to get your oil. For some people, it's too late to be invited into the wedding feast. Matthew 25, read the parable of the ten virgins. For many years I've been preaching this word, the word of righteousness, the teaching about righteousness, the teaching about coming into the knowledge of God's ways and walking in his ways. And so... We should have our oil by now. And if we don't, we may not make the cut. That cut is coming soon. 
the Kodeshim are about to be glorified. The wedding feast of the Lamb is at hand. We are there. We are there. Look at verse 97. See? The Lord 96 says the Lord is coming to does the earth then 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. See, that's key. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. That's the word of God. The word of God burns the dross of all, of all. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The, melt, the mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame who make their boast in worthless idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the lives of his Kodeshim. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Now we move to Psalm 98. Again, praises. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Remember how I told you that from Psalm 91 to Psalm 100, you have Psalms dealing with the Lord coming to judge the earth and establishing his kingdom. When he does that, he reveals his righteousness to all the people on the earth. He's not going to kill everyone on the earth at this time and in his day of wrath. He's not going to destroy the people who don't know him. He's not going to destroy many of the lukewarm Christians. But he is going to destroy those who have given themselves to Satan, to the worship of Satan. He is going to destroy many of those who call evil good and good evil. They have to be destroyed because they only bring chaos and destruction and death. And that time is coming to an end. So all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. This is going to be seen everywhere. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together. Before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people's with equity. Psalm 99. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. 
Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. And finally, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. When I see steadfast love, I always think of mercy. His mercy endures forever. When I see faithfulness, I think of truth. His truth to all generations. In um, King James Version and other versions of the Bible, you'll see that steadfast love is often translated mercy and faithfulness is translated truth. <clears throat> mercy and truth have kissed. In Christ, mercy and truth kiss. Mercy triumphs over judgment says James. Our God is a merciful God. So this judgment that's coming is going to be filled with mercy. Yes, there's going to be chaos. Yes, there's going to be darkness. Yes, there's going to be fear. But we don't have to be in fear. We should be in hope. We should be in thanksgiving. We should be in rejoicing for what is coming upon the earth because he comes. He comes to judge the earth and to set up his everlasting, beautiful kingdom founded upon justice and righteousness. How glorious, how wonderful. Peace, that means peace. No more oppression. We live under laws that are frames of injustice. And mankind has forever. Babylon the Great has ruled over 2,500 years. Her rule is coming to an end. God chose and anointed Donald Trump to destroy Babylon the Great. He's doing that. That's why they hate him. And he will succeed in what God has appointed him to do because God's word never returns void. Donald Trump will succeed. And as he succeeds, the Kodashim will be glorified. God will come in a cloud and establish his kingdom on earth and we are there. Are you ready? Are you filled with oil? Do you read your word? Do you, do you read your Bible every day? Do you pray every day? Do you ask for God's mercy every day? Do you believe in Jesus every day? I'm nothing special. Neither are any of the other people that you may think teach the word or preach the word or have a prophetic anointing or whatever else it is. We're all the same in that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ.
but we need to know his ways and we need to long for his ways and it's those who long for his ways who mourn over their carnal situation the way that they still are the things that they can't fix in their own flesh those are the ones who will inherit the kingdom so be encouraged be of good hope hope in the day of wrath continue in faith in the day of wrath he comes our god comes to judge the earth in righteousness and justice and to set up his peaceful kingdom that will rule the world through the Kodashim as princes over particular areas within the world. We are going to see the kingdom of God very soon. Very soon.